we're going to be going over the Winter 19 Platform Developer 1 Certification Maintenance. So this is working with a new Lightning component that was uh, recently went GA, so generally available. Uh, and this Lightning component is using, I'm assuming, Google Maps API, but it's, it's drawing a map inside of uh, Lightning. So pretty much like a Google Map or there's really no other kind of map out there. I'm not even going to lie. I like Quest. It doesn't exist anymore. So, um, yeah, we're going to be using objects inside of Salesforce to draw or plot points on a map. And we're actually going to be able to look up information based on um, the values that we have in the fields themselves. So that's also pretty cool. And all, a lot of it is takes a little bit of coding and, um, but a lot of it's provided to you. So that's pretty nice. What we're doing here in the beginning is a lot of the setup. So I'm going to be speeding it up a little bit. Um, it's the creation of the tower object, which is uh, sort of like a cell tower or a radius tower inside of a state. Uh, we're creating a master record detail to the account called state. So just follow along uh, in the beginning here with the trailhead module. You're going to be adding a couple fields in and a couple records. So once we actually dive into the code, we'll be able to see the information that we're looking at. Um, section we're at here is we're adding the geolocation type and switching it to decimal so that we're able to put in these uh, coordinates so that we can you know plot the points on there. Some of the documentation says that we can use the regular geo codes and I think you can actually use addresses as well and it'll uh, search and plot the addresses itself. I haven't had a chance to play with this other than um, what we're doing here. So I'm definitely going to be looking into this a little bit more. And this is also something that's a little near to my heart. I've had, uh, I've had to write JavaScript and um, Visual Force pages that does basically this. Um, there, we were fortunate to have a lot of guides out there, um, but still having to manually write all of the configuration and API enablements and things like that. This makes it a lot easier instead of uh, having to write job, uh, hard coded and you know legacy JavaScript in here. So continuing on, we are adding the last of the fields that we need to get on here um, and creating the, the records, uh, the tower records that are underneath it. And then we're finally going to be jumping into the code block. So opening up our developer console and we're going to be copying a few sections of code into um, our yeah our uh, our developer console and into this org so right here we're going to be getting this utilities class so the utility class uh, does a bit of searching and object querying um, it's not really gone into too deep and other than that, we're copying and pasting this utilities class uh, for filtering. Next up, we're going to be doing the controller. So same thing. Uh, one of the key things here that it's R enabled. And this controller is basically looking up all of the tower objects that we were going in. So another standard thing in the creation, you know, we're just going to be copying and pasting this into our org. Uh, the next section is the actual lightning component, which is going to house the map component uh, that we're going to be using. So in here, I'm going to uh, do a little skip because I could not find the name of the component, even though it's right there, tower map. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into that skip. Once I find tower map, we're going to, the name is tower map. So we're going to put that in reading a little bit more to see if we needed to put in tabs or pages or anything like that, but we are good there. So we're just going to go ahead and submit that. Next thing is we have a few different sections of code for the lightning components to copy in. So let's go uh, back up top and copy those sections of code. And then we're going to soon get into the uh, sections where we're going to, you know, actually be changing some things. So there's not much that we're changing in this challenge. I think it's just an overview for us to get the idea behind using the map. But um, it's pretty powerful stuff once we're able to get in here and actually uh, 
tinker around with these ourselves. It really enables developers to go ahead and, you know, make changes and do things with the standard things that Salesforce is providing us and uh, going through to making it more custom to our needs. So we're finishing up here with uh, the helper class and um, all the codes already written for us. It's, it's iterating through the uh, tower functions or sorry, the tower objects. So now we're going to get into uh, where we can find the documentation for the map itself. So in the trailhead module, we are going to go to the resources section. And in here, there is the map component documentation, and we'll find an example, a working example of what the map looks like. So we can see it on here, and then we can actually see some sections, uh, the, the map component written out there itself. So what you're going to do is copy and paste that into your own org, and you could have typed it out yourself, but... And I'm the kind of person, if it's there for me, then I'm going to, you know, put it in and use it the way that I want. Uh, next up, for the actual trailhead um, challenge, we're going to need to change the zoom level to five. And then we are going to be adding in the uh, marker title. And that is a attribute that's on this. It's, you can see it inside the documentation. And that's just the title of the attribute are the title of the marker once we get the map open. So we're going to go ahead and use the attribute that's we're being passed in from the helper and controller classes that we're getting and put it inside of the map component. So we'll cleaning up here and then we'll hit save. And then we're going to, after this saves, there we go. So then we're going to uh, go ahead and create a lightning builder app or a lightning app so then we can see this component itself. So we can go into setup, uh, searching for lightning builder. And then we're just going to be creating a final app here so that we can, um, you know, have the rest of the information we need. Uh, this app is going to be called Tower and uh, if you've done the platform app builder, it's, it's basically the, the same thing of going through a single page layout, calling it tower, putting the region in and putting that component on our page. And we can even see there that the component starts loading in already and I'm just activating it. So we have it available in our sales app, saving, and then we're finally going to view and complete the challenge in the end here. And here we go. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, check out my other Salesforce videos and be sure to subscribe. If you're looking to take your Salesforce knowledge to the next level, go to salesforcementor.com. There you can find training material and learn best practices to master Salesforce.